The following program is brought to you by Marshfield Community Television. This program is going to be focusing on the sawmill history of Wisconsin. It's a database of Wisconsin historic sawmills produced by my very good friend, Frank Hitz. We'll talk about him a little bit. He asked me, because he's got some vocal issues, he asked me to carry on an overview of where we've come from and where we're at and all the mistakes I make and all the things I forget to enter. He'll take care of in the uh, question and answers later. Um, he is the star of this. I'm simply an intermediary here today. And uh, <clears throat> I'm really pleased to present this because I think that Frank has produced a unique, comprehensive, indeed a seminal database on the historic sawmills of Wisconsin. As we, produce, as we go through this, I think you probably will agree now, the first thing we need to point to, just to get your attention, I am up here, folks, uh, is Wisconsin's historic sawmills, Frank Hitz, Loveland, Colorado. And one of the first things when I met Frank at one of these meetings was, is, why is somebody from Colorado the expert on these things? <laughs> well, uh, that was the first thing, but after I get to know Frank a little bit, uh, he has roots in Wisconsin, as some of you know. He spent his youth here, um, which brings him to Wisconsin. His father was a head band sawyer in mills here in north central Wisconsin. But more important to influence Frank in why he had this subliminal desire to study Wisconsin sawmills was his grandfather. In his youth, he got to spend a lot of time with his grandfather at his house, coming up north for vacations. His grandfather was retired to semi-retired. And his grandfather had been a head sawyer in mills from Wausau to Crandon, Elton, uh, Deerbrook, many places. And so Frank got imbued with the love and the legends and lore of the sawmill industry. Uh, so he had the desire. A desire doesn't come out with a great product. You've got to be qualified to do it. And I think Frank is uniquely qualified. If we look at it by personality, he's thorough, meticulous. By his education, Frank went through the normal public school education, went in the military. He came out and went through Baylor University, math, uh, uh, majoring in mathematics, tilted toward engineering. Hmm. He got out of school. And he spent an entire career, entire career in the aerospace industry. He did such unique things, folks, as <coughs> doing the calibration on the gun cameras for F-86 fighters. Uh, a lot of work with B-52s. He was the one who worked on the tele telemetry systems for the Peacekeeper missile. So if you pee him off, he's likely to send a missile toward you. <laughs> Anyway, all of these things, all of these things combine to, to for a diligent, meticulous, accurate person. He is one who can study and, and, take the pa and have the patience to do a super good job. <clears throat> now we've got the academic out of the way. We should have just a bit of a taste of real sawmills here. We'll see what real one later. This is a, uh, a photo of the mill just up the road at Deer Brook. And why I love this one is, I, I have learned to respect Frank a lot, if you understand that, is that he has his own note on it to me about the Deer Brook mill in 1925. Uh, his dad did work there. But it is a, a, a small to medium-sized sawmill. And that's included in his database of Wisconsin sawmills. Then you have the mega mill. This is a mill. Uh, I believe that's the mill at Menominee, Wisconsin, that we may see in two years. Hint, hint, hint. Come on to Menominee. We're going to have a, a, a good time. Anyway, this is the gamut from the small to the large 
I don't think Frank has made any attempt to capture the portable mills that moved around so often you couldn't hardly tell which farm they were on. Out of all this work and all his diligence, <coughs> Frank has come up with 2,754 mills operating in Wisconsin. That's a lot of mills, folks. It's taken him 14 years of work to develop this database. Now let's look at it in a little more um, with a little more background for your understanding. Where did he get all this stuff? He didn't pick it out of the air or, or rely on rumor. <coughs> Here is a montage of various publications of the lumber industry. I apologize that it comes through a little bit on the street side. <coughs> but in the pinery days, there were many lumbering publications. Lumber Work, Lumber Review, Lumber Trade Journal, uh, Timberman, Lumberman, Lumberman, they, it was common to have these. I was kind of surprised at the number that Frank came up with. Uh, but these are data sources. Oh, and they published a lot of information about the sawmills. However, one that he relied on quite, quite heavily is the very famous Northwest Lumberman. Uh, this is a 19, 1893 public, uh, their centennial. Uh, this is their uh, 20th anniversary uh, edition. The Northwest Lumberman and several others periodically would publish lists of all known operating mills in Wisconsin or in, in multiple states. And across, they'd have the mill uh, name and then across they would have the various species of wood they cut and the products they produced and how much of it. But this stuff is all on microfilm now. And if you've even spent an hour studying microfilm of old publications, you have a great deal of empathy for all the hours of work that Frank went through to develop the data that he has on these sawmills. <coughs> yes, and, and Frank, what another step is all this information would be fa fairly useless to us. But being the data-oriented person, he took it to the next step. He designed a form to record the information for each individual mill. And I won't go through all of it here today. Uh, we will have a few copies if you're really interested. But it lists the county, the watershed, uh, what, was, uh, what, it was, what was being cut, the years of operation, and a host of data. I think there's 26 data entries off each of these sheets. Plus the fact that you know it's in Wisconsin, so it's item 27. Yes, and he also included references to where he got the information. He's got it right down to primary source information. It's beautiful. <coughs> it's a massive database with 2,754 mills. If you published all the mills, you'd have 2,754 page book. That's a bit much. So he's trying to wrestle it down so that it can be in a manner that uh, you and other people can get it in because you had the 2,754 mills on this side of the page and across the top you have 26 characters for each mill. The amount of data there uh, defies the imagination so he needed to break it into pieces and the first thing he did there was to break it into pieces there are nine sub chunks of the database basically um, and he, he followed tradition. Uh, these are uh, aligned on what the public thinks of as watersheds. I call them log sheds because of the way the logs were driven to market. Um, <coughs> the Superior, <coughs> St. Croix, Chippewa, uh, Black River, Wisconsin, um, Wolf, Green Bay, the Lake Michigan southern region, and then there's a couple of spots here for the uh, Mississippi. So it's broken into subcategories. <coughs> this is an example, a, list, a sample listing page. Um, it's in the Lake Superior Basin or log shed. The mills, and this is not all of the mills in that basin, it was just as simply an example. The years of operation, the river or that it was on, the county, the town, and then a mill identifier number. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I actually like the 
actually, this is, was, was one of the uh, most uh, prolific sawmill areas because uh, this area is small and most of the sawmills were on the coast. And uh, for instance, there were uh, 222 sawmills just in this area, uh, small, small area. Yeah, geographically small, but quite actually surprisingly important. So this is broken down by each one of those watersheds or log sheds that we showed you before. Now comes the harder part because in contrast to other presentations, we're now going to ask you to do something. We're not just going to hand you something. We're hopeful that from the group we can get some volunteers to take Frank's database to a higher level of perfection. Frank really likes perfection. <laughs> so what we're going to do is ask for some help by, to review the database uh, by the watershed. And then we're going to ask for some help to identify mystery mills. And so we'll ask for some ha uh, hands on that or some communication in a bit. Uh, first, we'll deal with what we call a beta test. In, in search of perfection, Frank would like some help uh, people to review the sawmills in each of the riverways or each of those nine groups. I don't think there are too many mills that could have been missed, but if someone knows of a mill and can produce really solid uh, documentation of it, uh, virtually primary source, then we can uh, perfect it before we worry about publication or putting it on the web. We want to get the database down. Then there's a sheet, and we're going to hand out, uh, particularly this sheet, the Mystery Mills of Wisconsin. Um, after all he found with 2,754 mills, there came up 13 mills in Wisconsin that he has had some s fragments of information about, but not enough to include them in the database, nor to just throw them out the window and say they didn't exist. So we've got sheets, uh, a, a few, I think I've got 20 um, copies of the mystery mills. We're asking anybody in the group, or if you know people outside the group, who can give us information to either uh, validate these mills and then substantiate them with the information for the database, uh, or if you know that it, it's simply a rumor, that would be helpful also. So we're going to be asking for two bits, some people to do a beta test or review on each of the watersheds, and then uh, we're asking for your help for the mystery mills. I'd say thank you for your attention. I know it's almost lunchtime and you're weary, but we're going to ask for some Frank to clarify anything that I <coughs> confused or <laughs> add what I didn't, what I, uh, what I should have said and didn't. Hey, here you go, Frank. Well, what, what I also wanted to mention, um, <coughs> I produced uh, the record of uh, all the sawmills in the Northwest area. Uh, and I divided them into categories Lake Superior, St. Croix, Chippewa River, and two divisions of uh, Mississippi because some of them drained uh, in the north region and the, the, some of them drained to the Mississippi in the southern region. Uh, but this is an uh, example of the, of the mills that I got dedicated to the Chippewa River and there is 520 mills <clears throat> and what I wa wanted to d uh, display that uh, 
as as Ed was talking, he referred to a piece of paper that had a listing of mills. And they were a li one line listing. And I have the entire, entire uh, uh, 520 on win list and there is a about another uh, 300 mills that are in the northwest region so i would like to uh, have people if they wanted to just to review part part of these uh, mills and and uh, identify some possible errors or, or questions and and uh, uh, I would ask for names of people that were interested in, in doing it and then uh, I'll get get these areas to the uh, uh, individuals. <coughs> 